Hi there, I'm Black Voigt. I've got a smirk on my face, which means I'm going to talk about something controversial today. And that is Trump's visit to the UK. Now, a few months ago, the Queen didn't want anything to do with him. Prince Charles, they was all making a big fuss, even though they welcomed him kind of in a half-hearted vein. This time, he's got the 41 gun salute. He's got the grenadine guards. And he's got the whole shebang. They're taking him on a banquet. They're inviting him here. They're inviting him there. What's changed? Well, I have my my theory about his visit. It's got nothing to do with Huawei and climate change, like what he's alleging or what the media is alleging. You know, they don't want us to know the real deal. So what is the real deal? The real deal is that the UK is £22 billion in war debt to the USA. You know what that means? It means that the UK has to do everything that the USA states, starting with the election. Trump has thrown it out there. He wants Boris Johnson to be uh, the prime minister, and he will be. Regardless of what anybody says, it's already in the bag. And why does he want Boris Johnson? Because Boris Johnson has very similar traits to him. You know, he's anti-immigrant, you know, he's, um, he's Islamophobic, he, you know, well, and that's what they allege from what he said about the, the, you know, the women who wear burqas. He said that they look like letter, why would they want to look like letterboxes? So that um, created a bit of a stir. But he said lots of little bits which people infer to mean that he, he has racist tendencies. I don't know. Just saying what people say. Anyway, they call him Boris the Trump of London. So therefore, if those two get together, which I believe they will, and what I believe these talks are about, you know the lie that Boris um, Johnson told us about the £350 million a day, a week, going to the EU when it was a lie, um, and it was supposed to be um, invested in the NHS, all that money that didn't go, it would be invested in the NHS. I think there lies our clue. I think that what he's come over to do is to talk about how he can privatise the NHS. He's already said, Trump has already said, that the federal government um, recruits too many immigrants. And it's the same with the NHS. As far as he's concerned, it, it allows too many immigrants to get a job. So he wants to put a stop to that. This is just my theory. He'll want to put a stop to that. So that is that part. Remember that poem I said about de destabilizing the middle class? It's mostly middle class immigrants who work for the NHS. So therefore, a wonderful opportunity to bring it down to its knees. And so it gets privatised. It gets taken over. I mean, EU, we don't know if EU is going to agree. It's not going to be that easy to sell off the NHS because it's broken into four parts. Um, we've got um, NHS England, we've got NHS Scotland, we've got NHS Wales, and we've got health and something in Ireland. But it's four parts of the NHS. So I'm not quite sure how they will do it. But believe me, they've had their eye on the NHS for a while. And that will help all the corporate banks who, who are trying to get their fingers on that money. And I don't, and you know what will happen. We won't be able to access health care. We'd have to buy private insurance and we're going to be up the creek like those people in um, America. And the way that universal credit is going, we're not going to be able to even ax have the money you know, have enough money to pay for our health care. What does that mean? We're thrown into poverty. We all get ill. None of us can get our prescriptions. This sounds like a worst case scenario. It might, may even sound like I'm dramatising. And as some people call me a smoke, a smoke screen or a smoke detector or whatever they call me. Oh, smoke alarm. That's it. So maybe it does sound a bit like that. But a lot of things I've said just by looking and thinking have come about. 
somebody else has said it or it, a few days later you'll hear someone else say it or something like it. Anyway, what was I going to say? Um, the US ambassador to the UK, Woodman, said that the NHS is on the ta table for the post-Brexit deal with the US. So there, that's saying it as well. And US firms will be bidding for the NHS contracts. NHS could be sold off and people will have to get private insurance or pay at the desk. However, not easily sold because the NHS is broken up into four parts, like I said, NHS England, NHS Scotland, NHS Wales, and Ireland Health and Social Care. So, and you know, his, tri his trip here, he's been, he, the police are being re reimbursed 7.9 million. And you know, last year when he came, it cost 18 million. Why would we be paying 18 million? What do they think all those police officers are going to do to Trump? What a waste of bloody money. 18 million. And we've got people there on the streets starving. We have people on universal credit who don't even know where their next meal is coming from. And they have 18 million last year to pay for police protection. And for 7.9 million for this, this, this visit, I guess because it's only three days. But that's a farce, isn't it? 46% endorse his visit. I tell you something, Boris gets in and we have Trump. Problems. A lot of problems. But it's it's being planned. It's it's not by it's not by accident that Theresa May got booted out. It's not by accident that Boris um, Johnson is going to be voted in. It, none of this is by accident. They're just creating a scenario to make it look like all the pieces of puzzle, so that all the pieces of puzzle seem to be fitting together. But it's pre-designed. It's preordained. They're planning it this way. So. Let's see what else I've got here. The, the NHS was a bargaining tool to leave the EU and it would be the bargaining tool that the US will use to take it from the UK. Because, remember, the UK is indebted to the US. That's why whatever the US says, the UK does or says, or but the UK does it like if they're not really doing anything and they do all their stuff undercover. So it'll all come as a big surprise to some people when the shit hits the fan. Excuse my French. That's how I feel right now. Um, Boris claimed that we were giving the EU 50, 350, pound, 350 million a week, which is why a lot of people paid, um, well, voted for Brexit. Load of tosh. Apparently he's going to court for it, but you know it's not going to amount to anything. If groping women and talking so slanderously about women didn't affect the, um, Trump getting to be the president, why would a few little lies affect Boris Johnson? Why would it? They just have to put this out there to create some sensationalism. And then, you know, people get angry because he's a liar and they're still putting him as prime minister. Oh, it's such a, it's so predictable. It really is. Um, and then by doing that, 350 million a, a week to the NHS, what he did really in a covert way was to alert the um, Americans how expensive NHS was and how much money they could make through the NHS. So, of course, they hear 350 million a week. They, they, you know, the light bulbs go, you know, they see dollar signs. I tell you, it's going to happen. I mean, they're talking about people stockpiling about stockpiling their prescriptions because of Brexit. <sighs> You've got worse to think about. You just have to hope that whatever prescriptions you need are accessible. Well, to be honest, they won't be, will they? They're privatised. We're going to have to pay it, and they know we can't pay it. And I don't know what they're going to do. I'd, anyway, I'm not even going to go there. It sounds absolutely awful. Okay. Um, 
So what I, was, what I put here was, the more people say they don't want Boris Johnson as president, I mean, as prime minister, he will be. And it's all, it's all to, you know, create some hype. Um, Trump, Trump endorses Boris Johnson, so he'll be the one that gets the job because they both have biased comments in common. And they both kind of, they, they, neither of them um, take it back or apologise. You know, I think Trump denied calling Meghan Markle nasty. Apparently it's in print that he did. But who cares? Does it really? You know, they make all these little snide comments to the public, you know, to reinforce the antagonism. They want people to be antagonistic against Trump. So they keep bringing it all out. Why do they keep reminding us and telling us we know what type of person he is? or what type of person he claims to be, or what type of person he wants us to believe he is. We know that. So all these little things that they sensationalise, there's a point to it. There's a point to it. There's a point that they're telling us in a covert way, you immigrants, you better be careful. You immigrants, you'll soon be governed by two racist dictators, so you better be careful. That's what they're really trying to warn us. In my opinion, ah, oh dear, what can we say? What can we do? Um, Boris Johnson was born of a wealthy. This is what he's got in common with um, Trump. Boris Johnson was born in a wealthy family, born to a wealthy family in New York. I don't even think if he's American with a Turk, why can he be a British? Why can he be a British prime minister? The prime minister should be British, shouldn't be American, because that that's even worse. No wonder Trump ah, no wonder Trump likes him, because they're both Americans, and they're going to have American being a prime minister of Britain. That's not right. We should have a British prime minister, the same way because technically he's a bloody foreign national, so technically. You know, how can he work in our, in the British people's interests? He's going to be working in the Americans' interest. He's not going to be working for us. You people, anyway, we haven't even got a say because it's the Member of Parliament and what do they do? They stick their nose up in the air and they don't really know what's going on. So, as my mum would say, well, she wouldn't really, but, you know, some people would say that. Um... So he's born to a wealthy family in New York, conservative, accused of being anti-immigrant and Islam Islamophobic. In 2001, he was a member of parliament. He hasn't got that in common with Trump. And 2008, he was the mayor of London for eight years. So, yeah. Apparently, um, the discussions that they're alleging that um, Trump will be coming over here, apart from the NHS, is this TTIP. I don't know if you've heard of it. It's a transatlantic trade investment partnership. Apparently that has something that is a major threat to the NHS. And Trump um, dumbed it down. He didn't want to have anything to do with it a few years ago. But now they've made some revisions to it. And he's, he's getting on board with this. So that has something to do with it. Don't ask me what. But they might be even talking about that under the umbrella of climate change and Huawei. Why would we be interested in Huawei? Why would um, Theresa May be interested in Huawei, for Christ's sake? Some bloody phones in China. I mean, they're alleging that they've got some kind of spyware in them. I mean, oh, please. Everything's got spyware in it. Everything from Google Maps to everything. We're being watched and, and, and monitored. So what difference does this make? Maybe the only difference it makes is that, is that they're, they're, not, um, they're not monitoring us. It's the Chinese. Maybe that's what it is. I don't know. Um, apparently TTIP is the flagship for standardising le legal regulations. And these negotiations usually take place behind closed doors. Um, what else was I going to say? Oh, yeah, they, they're saying that 
and I say they, I'll have to send you a link because I was reading a few, I was listening to a few videos um, that UK, US might make something similar to the NAFTA agreement. NAFTA is the North American Free, Free Trade Agreement. So they're thinking that that's going to, they're going to kind of come up with something similar. And, um, but that NAFTA agreement caused 70,000 jobs and increased poverty in Mexico, apparently. There was a few countries involved in that. Um, let me see if they're saying EU might sell out to the NHS. We will not have a say in how healthcare is provided. Healthcare will become expensive and inaccessible. And uh, free healthcare, well, we don't have that anyway. It's a misnomer. It's only free for emergency and um, emergencies and accidents. Um, and there is a rumour that it might even have something to do with the 5G rollout, how they're going to implement that so it comes in in a way that's um, attractive because you know it's hazardous to our health apparently. Um, we're all going to be exposed to radio active, um, whatever those are called, neurons or whatever they're called. And apparently is it uh, damages your DNA, ah, radiation exposure and all those kind of things. Well, we've heard about the 5G, but it's going to come. Regardless of what we want, the people in power are going to do what they need to do. I mean, that 5G, it might even have something to do with, you know, why we didn't have Virgin. A lot of people didn't have Virgin the other day. Do you remember? I mean, mine's working now. I don't know about you lot, but... It might have something to do with that, you know, because they've got to install these things all over the place. So they might be, you know, preparing for the onset of 5G. You know, you don't know what these powerful people are setting up for us. But all I'm saying is we don't have a say. We have to just sit by, look and behave like puppets have, as that they've conditioned us to be. They've conditioned us to be addicted to our phones, addicted to the TV, addicted to garbage. That's what they've trained our minds, the majority of our minds to do. Just be addicted to, to um, electro electronic equipment and all that kind of stuff and social media. And then do you notice if you do not go on social media for a couple of days or a week, there's like this message, oh, your friends are missing you. Like hell they are. They probably don't even know you exist, but they're missing you. They tell you a whole heap of crap. They want, you, they want to get you in. I used to be on Facebook every minute, honestly. I'm not on it as often now. I post, sometimes I post these um, videos on Facebook if I think it's of community interest. Sometimes I usually post them on Twitter so it goes a bit wider. But I'm not on Facebook every day anymore. So they, you know, they're getting a bit worried. They, they stopped my, um, they stopped me about three or four times. So I got peed off. But just because because I don't even know why I showed a couple of movies and they said oh I don't even know what they said but it was so bloody ridiculous so I can't be asked I've lost all that that loyalty I had all that enthusiasm with Facebook I'm a youtuber now but anyway putting that aside um Queen is hosting a state banquet at Buckingham Palace um and she's showing where her loyalty lies in doing that now so and have you noticed, you know, we've got the onset, you know, I've, I've got a funny feeling a war is on, is on the horizon. And have you noticed how they're trying to make the army look attractive on the, on the video, on the, on the advertisements? You know, sharing birthdays and all that crap. They've already said that the army is patriotic, which is another word of loyal to your own kind. And we've already heard rumours of how they've abused and um, treat isolated black people who've gone into the army. They've given them hell. And all these, what do they call initiation rites that they do to them? Honestly. So I don't care what they're showing on that TV as the army being all this wonderful place. They're just looking for people to put in the front line. That's what they're looking. So any black people out there, if you want to be in the front line, they're not going to put you at the back, love. You're going to be the barricade. So you get shot first. So you go on. 
Anyway, um, what else have I got here? Foreign secretaries and home secretaries seem to be anti-foreign and go have a go back home mentality. I was trying to be a bit clever there, but it is true. And um, yeah, that's all I've got to say about Boris Johnson being prime minister, Trump's present in the UK. Be afraid, be very afraid. And that's all for now. Take care now. Bye-bye.